Hello my fellow Gwentlings and welcome back to another episode of Cyclopean Craft. Today we are going to finally, finally give Gwent Tower its purpose. Before we do though, I've got one thing to show you and it's over at the old mill, so I'll meet you over there. So here we are at the old mill and pay no attention to the exterior of this building because I've just uh, created some extra chest monsters over here. But the interior is now almost complete. We've got a little tunnel down here that goes towards the arena, which we do need to light up, actually. So let's do that while I'm here. Let's just pop down a torch there and there. And I think that will do, because it doesn't need to be too bright. Luckily, we're on a mushroom island, so uh, we don't get any mob spawn anyway. In here, though, we are actually going to be creating a souvenir shop for all of the combatants that decide to do battle over at the arena. Uh, we've got this lovely stairway that goes up and around, and... A little view of well actually this isn't a view of the arena <laughs> this is actually um, we're going to have a pathway here that takes us into the arena and then we're going to be able to go up these stairs and this is the level at which you would get a view of the battle any battle that goes on um, you can't see the whole arena unfortunately you probably could from the top there but i'm not sure if i want to continue the stairs uh, all the way around and up to to this level here i could do though it would be fairly simple Maybe I should. Am I just being lazy? I'm just being lazy. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is what I've done so far anyway. Um, right, let's get over to Gwent Tower so I can explain the plan. So, like I said, we're finally going to be giving Gwent Tower its purpose. And we do need to reshape this path so that it meets the bridge snug. Because this is, well, disgusting. Gwent Tower is actually going to become a bank. So on the ground floor, we're going to be trading stocks and shares. Uh, for all of the other companies that are set up here in the Cyclopean Craft Shopping District. And you're going to be able to buy shares, trade shares, sell shares, do whatever you want with the shares. But ultimately, uh, they're going to go up and down. And um, it's up to you to, to decide what you want to do with them once you've got them. But uh, the prices of them will go up and down anyway, just like a, a normal stocks and shares market so so for any of you guys who who don't know i actually work in the financial sector and i work in a bank so i know roughly how the banking system works and so on level two of this uh of gwent tower we're going to be having uh, probably um probably still in this sort of first cuboid section but it'll be a second floor in here um we're going to be having a a couple of offices and a banking hall so that um, customers can come and uh, they can ask for loans or they can put this their diamonds into savings um, but lots of different financial things uh, they could get a mortgage they could buy land you know all of those all of those little things <laughs> and we are going to facilitate those purchases we're going to look after their money and we're going to loan them any diamonds that they may need uh, for some upcoming purchases that they may want to make uh, so that's the plan, at least. I just need to get everything in place for it. Now, I do plan on using um, some villagers around the place and, uh, you know, just to add to the, the atmosphere. But I want it to look very much like the, the ground floor. I want to look very much like Wolf of Wall Street. You know, you've got your stocks and shares cubicles all set up where you've got people trading and, and all sorts. I want it to look quite busy in here. The only problem I think I'm going to face with this build is figuring out where to put the elevator. I've got an idea that it's going to go against this wall because this wall goes almost all the way to the top. But I'm not 100% on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pop in some cubicles, get some desks down and then come back and show you the progress that I've made. And hopefully by then I would have come up with some sort of pricing system because I'm kind of winging it. Um, I've just had this great idea and I want to make it work. <laughs> so I'll see you back here in just a second. I've done it. I've completed the trading hall almost. I just need to do some finishing touches. And here it is. So I've added in some trees on the outside here. I'm going to do a couple more bushes and things out, out around here just to make it look a little bit more... Um, I don't know, just a little bit more pleasant. It adds, it's quite good for scale. Like, this is a tree, and then this is how big Gwent Tower is. <laughs> uh, so, on the wall, I've got the opening times. So, it's open Monday to Friday, because on the weekends, I'm going to be resetting the share prices. So, every week, the share prices will change. And they will actually change based on things like stock levels, sales, um, 
uh, lots of different things. How often that person's been on the server, um, loads of stuff. And I've divided everybody's shops into different companies. So on here we've got the trading hall on the on the ground floor. On the first floor we've got the banking hall, and on floor sixty nine we've got the studio all the way up there. <laughs> um, okay, so you can see we've got Carrot Gold and Co. Drastic Holdings, Modest Ltd, Hank PLC, LZ Enterprises, which is ENT. Uh, I think it's ENT. If I'm wrong on that, someone correct me. Um, Eleni Inc. We've got Astro Industrial, Gwent Financial, Zach Corp, and PNP General. So I've put everybody's uh, names in signs here on the walls and I'm going to be putting the share prices next to them um, and I've done it like this so that I can just change the share prices without having to change the name plates every time because adding all these colors in is quite annoying actually <laughs> um, I've got a little book here that explains to the to the other cyclopeans how they need to to trade and in each of these barrels uh, we've got one share so the price for one share will be written on the walls so if let's say you want um, Carrot Gold and Co's shares. The price will be here, so let's say it's five diamonds per share. You would take one share and just leave five diamonds in in its place. And then let's say you wanted to sell a share. So let's we'll pretend for right now that grass is shares. So you've just bought this uh, Carrot Gold and Co share for five diamonds or five pieces of grass. <laughs> um, and then you go away and you come back a week later and. Um, you look at the share prices and you think, oh, it's gone up. It's actually now seven um, diamonds per share. What would happen is you'd come over to the chest. You'd look in here and where, where initially your five diamonds were, there will be seven diamonds waiting for you. So if you did want to cash in your shares, you literally just, just swap it back. So you take the seven diamonds out, put the shares back in, and off you go along your way. You've just made a two diamond profit. Um, let's say it goes down by, let's say you've bought it for five diamonds and it goes down for three, then when you come back in here to sell it, there will actually only be three diamonds in here that you can replace your shares for. So it's quite a good system. It's one that I'll have to keep on top of, but hopefully it should replenish itself. So that's uh, that's the plan there. Um, it's kind of, it's basically, it's gambling, and uh, but gambling for professionals, because it's only professionals that gamble in the trading world. <laughs> um, and then if we go up to floor, oh, actually just to explain some of the, what I've gone for here. These are like sort of computer desks, I've decided. Um, <laughs> I, this was the best I could do, really. Uh, but I think this is, I think it looks quite good. It's quite professional, isn't it? And anyone who's worked in a call center will know that um, when it comes to, you, you'll be sat at your desk and you'll look up and you'll have these sort of foam panels in front of you and normally to the side of you as well to stop um, sound from getting into your sort of area. Uh, and that's what I've gone for here. Um, they also double up as like screens or, or PCs or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's what I've done there. And then the book just explains what we're going to do. So at the top upstairs, and in the book it does explain what to do for the upstairs portion as well. Uh, we've got a little till over here for the teller. So if you want to deposit your cash, you would deposit over here. I think I'm going to have to come up with some sort of system for people to deposit while I'm not around. Maybe... Um, Maybe they do something like rename their diamonds or something or um, or something like that. Or maybe I'll have a ledger and we'll have a chest and the ledger will say, so you deposit into the chest and then you type in the ledger what your deposit was. And then this is my office. This is where I open all the new accounts for the Cyclopeans. I come over here, I sit at my desk, I type away on my keyboard over here, type, 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 and uh, give people accounts basically. <laughs> so people can actually apply for a new savings account where they will get, uh, for example, they could get something like, um, for every stack of diamonds they deposit, they will get two diamonds per week in interest. And then uh, we could also do something with loans. So for every um, stack of diamonds someone loans, they would pay back, I don't know, let's just say, for example, five diamonds per stack um, for loans. And that's how banks make their money. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, banks make their money by um, giving you less in savings than they charge in loans, in interest on loans. So your savings will only get something like 1% and loans will will normally cost you something like 3 or 4%. If you've got a really good credit score, loans could cost you, you know, 20, 30% if you've got a bad credit score. So um, I'm not going to implement the credit score system, though. That's going to be quite difficult to, <laughs> to judge. Um, 
Well, actually, if people don't pay their loans back on time, that would harm their credit score, which would mean that actually I could charge that Cyclopean more money for loans in the future. So if they miss a payment, I could say, well, look, you've missed a payment. So actually now the interest is going to be 10% uh, or for every 64 diamonds you've borrowed, you're now going to have to pay me back um, six diamonds instead of five diamonds or something like that. Uh, but I'm actually th I actually think this will be a really good system. I hope the Cyclopeans use it. Another thing I've got planned is that I'm going to give out, once people open new cards, uh, new accounts, I'm going to give out cards. So they can go to a shop and maybe leave like an IOU, collect at Gwent Bank or something like that. I think that would be quite fun. Uh, I really do think it would be fun to do that. So you can go into a shop, purchase items with your, your card and you would just write an IOU out. Uh, leave it in the chest, and then that company or that shop can come to uh, Gwent, uh, Gwent Bank and collect their, their diamonds from your, your pot of diamonds in the bank. So you don't have to keep sort of carrying your diamonds around with you. They'll be here in a, in a vault or in a secure location. Um, there'll be ledgers here with everything written down on so we know who, whose is what. And, uh, and yeah, and, and then banks uh, the, the shops can come up to the bank collect their money, deposit their money, uh, and off they go. I may do a thing where I open business accounts and personal accounts. I'm not sure. That might be getting a little bit too far into it. But overall, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. All I really need to do now is work on getting um, the signs uh, with the, the prices of the shares on and let the Cyclopeans know that it's open for business. I just need a little bit of dark oak to finish up the signs, so I'm sure no, nobody will mind if I... I just take just a couple of pieces, just from here, just for some signs. I'm sure no one will mind. I mean, it's not like we're, we're anywhere important, you know. Um, I mean, how many have I got now? Yeah, 17, that should do. That should do. No, but everyone will be okay with that. Nobody will mind that. So I've connected this path over here, and it goes now over onto the bridge correctly. And you'll actually notice outside here, you may have noticed in the last clip, I've raised the path here as well, so it's all on one level now. And yes, yeah, so we got. We should have enough wood now for our signs. Uh, we've got one already. I need to make a, a couple of more. A couple more, and we just need to put some prices on. So I was thinking, let's just pop. Um, every share will be worth the same amount to start with. I think. Let's start with that. Right. The final signs are in place, guys. We've got five diamonds for each of the shares to start off with. So if anyone wants to buy shares in any of the companies, they need to put five diamonds in its place. Now, the reason I didn't make this cheaper was because I don't want people coming in and just buying all the shares because that kind of defeats the whole purpose. And there are definitely players who could probably afford this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at people like uh, Poison and PK. They probably have an absolute fortune from their shops. Um, and they could probably afford to buy all of these. But I, I urge you guys, please don't buy them all. Just buy um, a reasonable amount, whatever you're happy with. But please don't just go ham. <laughs> but if they do that, I can always create more shares. So that's not going to be an issue anyway. Uh, and then up here, I have put up some signs. So the first one says, please arrange a meeting with Gwent for your new account. And over here, we've got the deposits and withdrawal withdrawals counter, which is right here. You put your diamonds in here and I'm going to have to come up with a book or some way for people to actually do it. But right now, no one has an account, so nobody can deposit because people need to open an account first. And I will explain to them when they open an account what they need to do with their deposits and withdrawals. And then on the wall here, we've got the interest rates um, just for people's um you know, perusal if they if they can work it out. So uh, loans are 8% and savings are at 3%-ish. <laughs> Come on, I, I'm a banker. I can't be completely honest. Um, but no, this basically works out to loans for a stack of 64 diamonds. You would be paying an extra five diamonds um, per annum, per week, I guess. I would do it with that. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure whether this is per annum or per week or just... Well, well, I'll just keep it simple, probably. So if you take a stack of 64 uh, diamonds, we'll work out over the repayment period, say at one week or three weeks, how much interest you need to pay. And it'll be some... It'll probably be something like five diamonds per week of borrowing is added on to your interest. So if you pay the 64 diamonds back within a week, you would end up paying 69 diamonds back. And if it goes over three weeks, so let's say you did like... Um, uh, I don't know, like 20 
21 diamonds a week to get to 63 diamonds and then the extra diamond on the last week that would cost you 15 diamonds in total so that's what we'll do with the loans and with savings it's three percent ish so for every 64 diamonds you deposit you'll actually get an extra two diamonds per week on your deposit so that's i think that's actually pretty fair so if people have got like literally stacks on stacks of diamonds they're going to just be accumulating extra diamonds just for the sake of keeping them in gwent bank so i think that will work out really well and that's actually where I'm going to leave it for today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And also, I have just started a new Sky Factory series, which I would appreciate it if you guys would go and watch. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, but anyway, have a nice day. I'm Gwent Gamer. Goodbye.